So today in our basic circuits tutorial, we are going to be covering Thevenin circuits, Thevenin equivalent circuits. So first of all, Thevenin, T-H-E with a funky thing over it, V-E-N-I-N, -E Thevenin. And that is named after the guy who came up with this. So the Thevenin theorem is that you can take basically any linear circuit of any complexity and reduce it down to a voltage source and a series equivalent resistor just like that. So the idea is that you could have multiple power sources, multiple resistors, anything that doesn't make this circuit nonlinear and simplify it down to this if you only have one section of the circuit that you care about. Uh, let's just say you have one load that you know that you got to iterate on that load like, oh, is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? And you don't want to have to solve for the entire circuit over and over again when you know that this load is going to be the only thing that you're actually changing. So that is the, the beauty of the Thevenin circuit is the ability to take something very complex, again, as long as it's linear, and take it down to something that is literally just a voltage supply and a series resistor. And usually when you do this, uh, and we'll get into how you do this, you label this like voltage Thevenin and resistance seven in. And so what we're going to go over today is basically how you find these. And it's really not that complicated as long as you remember the different steps. So let's go over those steps really quick and then we'll go over one or two samples and um, show it in action. So all of these steps are basically so you can find your Thevenin resistance and your Thevenin voltage. And the way you find your Thevenin resistance is you basically just turn all of your voltage sources into shorts and all of your current sources into opens. And then from the viewpoint of your load, see what the resistance is going into that. And then on your Thevenin voltage, you basically just take out your load and then you find out what your voltage is across that spot where your load was. All right, so now that that was incredibly confusing, let's go through the individual steps and then we'll apply them and then everything will start to make a lot of sense. Okay, so that was quite a bit uglier than I was anticipating, but I just wanted something to kind of point at as we're going through these steps. So the first step, as always for me, is to take a moment, look at your circuit. Okay, we've got this circuit. This is kind of a weird circuit. I have no idea where anybody would ever use this other than some evil circuits teacher trying to throw you off. But you've got two voltage sources, a current source, you've got a bunch of resistors, and then, ah, here is my load resistor. So this, this is what I care about. All right, so those are probably going to be fighting each other. This is basically going to be dominating the voltage here. It is independent. All right, good to go. I am familiar with my circuit. Let's go on to step two. So the second step is going to be to remove this resistor load. So as we are trying to make this circuit look like this circuit, we're trying to find the value of what that's going to look like. So this is where we take all of the voltage sources and turn them into shorts and take the current source and make it an open. And so we basically look at this and we say, what is going to be the resistance over here looking at it from the view of our load? So just taking this, okay, this is gonna turn into a short. This is going to turn into a short. This is going to turn into an open. So that means you can basically ignore this one, and then it's going to be this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor in parallel. So the R Thevenin is basically going to be those three resistors in parallel because, again, you can ignore this resistor since that has turned into an open, and those are now shorts. So taking out these supplies and getting rid of that and finding that parallel resistance is our third step. So our first step was to examine it. Our second step was to remove this load resistor from the circuit. And then our third step was to remove those and calculate the resistance of the rest of the circuit. Now, the fourth step is we're going to be looking for our Thevenin voltage. Now, because we have removed this load and we're gonna treat this as an open, you can, this is where you go through and you will have to solve this using Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, whatever, and find out what your voltage is right here. And whatever that voltage is, remembering that this is now an open, that is your Thevenin voltage. So you've just created, or you've just found out your resistance, your Thevenin resistance, and now you're finding out your Thevenin voltage. And so those are steps one through four. Again, looking through it, figuring out what you're doing. Second, removing the, the load. Third, removing all the sources and finding your Thevenin resistance. Fourth, remove, making sure you're still keeping the load out and finding your Thevenin voltage. Now your fifth step is basically just to put the load back into your Thevenin equivalent circuit. 
and doing whatever analysis you need to do there. Now, as always, our final step, our sixth step, is sanity check. This is where, if you can, if you're doing this for school or something, stick all of this into a SPICE program or something in both forms and figure out, did this actually work right? Am I getting the same values for both of them? And if so, great. If not, well, then figure out where you screwed up and try it again. Sanity check, very, very important. So let's do a quick sample and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the original problem that we have. And so we are going to now work through the steps. First step, figuring out what we're doing. Looking at it, okay, we've got two power sources, two resistors. This is going to be our load. And so let's mark this as node A, node B, because that helps sometimes. I don't know why I didn't write that on the actual corner instead. I'm just gonna be because I'm emphasizing it. There we go, that's, that's it. Okay, so step two was to remove that resistor, which we have done. Now the third step is going to be to find that equivalent resistance, that uh, R thevenin, RTH. And so because these are voltage sources, we are going to short them, current sources you open. And so that's basically gonna turn into something that from the view of the um, the node we're looking at is going to look something like that, which is a little bit ugly, frankly. Um, but you can tell that that's simply that 200 ohms and that 100 ohms in parallel with each other. So our R thevenin is going to be 200 in parallel with 100, which is, oops, sanity check. Dang it. I was thinking that was weird. Okay, if you actually look at this, you're gonna realize that that's a, that's a short circuit across this 200, so that cuts the 200 out. So it's not 200 in parallel with 100. I don't know what I'm thinking. R thevenin is just 100 ohms. Okay, so through that convoluted and kind of messed up process, we found out that the R thevenin is 100 ohms, and so that makes things nice and pretty. So we are now on to step four, where we're gonna figure out the thevenin voltage. And that is where we can go back up to this, oh, actually up to this, and figure out what our voltage is across A and B. Now, just from inspection, you can look at this and remember from our dependent and independent uh, voltage source overview, this five volt source will do whatever is necessary to keep this particular spot at five volts. And so the voltage we are going to see across A and B is going to be five volts because there's not gonna be any current through this 100 ohm resistor. So it's gonna be five volts right here, five volts right there, and zero volts right there. So we can, from inspection, we don't even have to do any math, know that our V thevenin is going to be five volts. And so now we can just redraw this beautiful circuit like this. And our R thevenin is 100 ohms, and our V thevenin is five volts. Now the fun thing about this is if you look at it, this makes a lot of sense. So as we go on to that last step of the sanity check, um, since we just, we're assuming we put that R load in there, we can look at the full thing and think, yeah, that makes sense. It's almost like this 10 volts and 200 ohms are completely independent of this section over here. You don't, you don't need that. No current is gonna go over here other than what's being driven by this five volts. If this tries to go higher than five volts, it's gonna absorb current. And if it tries to drop below five volts, it's gonna be producing current. So that's the only portion that we need to worry about in terms of voltage. And then we have that 100 ohms that kind of isolates it as well. So in this particular case, the thevenin equivalent circuit is just hiding that portion of it because it doesn't affect the load. It doesn't affect the part you care about in this particular case. So that's kind of cool. That's where the sanity check comes in. Like, yeah, this actually makes sense. Okay, since that one was simple, let's, um, let's do another one really quick. Okay, so in this circuit, we are going to say that the 50 ohm resistor right here is our, our load. So going through step number one, we look at it, 100 volts, 80 volts. Okay, so that's gonna put this spot somewhere between 180 volts, that makes sense. 10 ohms, 20 ohms, 50 ohms. Okay, kind of expecting flow to work in here somewhere. I think I have a grasp on this. Good times, let's go. So the second step is going to be to remove this resistor load. And this is where somebody was like, wait, what? What's going on? Somebody was trying to mess with us. 
So we have this where it's 100 volts and then 10 ohms and then 80 volts, 20 ohms. And then put the load over here. And at first I was like, wait, what? how can you move that over there? But that is where it's really important to identify your nodes. So you've got A, you've got B, and B is pretty obvious because it's down here and it's basically your ground. And then A, it's between your 10 and your 20, so it's still sticking right there. It's just over here, so you can have that as A and have that as B. And I think that is both a dirty trick and something that is absolutely wonderful that circuits teachers do, is they'll try and take a circuit that you're kind of familiar with and you get comfortable looking at it in a certain way, and then they'll tweak it in such a way that it's totally the same using the nodes, but it's got weird placement and all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of dirty, but it's also super great because it forces you to not just always get comfortable with the typical way that it's shown, but know that, okay, just because that's set up differently, as long as the nodes match, it is the exact same circuit. Okay, so we've done number two and we have removed that load. Now number three. So number three is going to be to remove our power sources and find out the equivalent resistance. So in this case, now that 100 volts and that 80 volts, they turn into shorts. So here we have those, and then we come up here, A, B, 80, oh, dang it, 20, excuse me, 10. And this time, since those two are sharing nodes, those are actually in parallel. So R Thevenin is 10 ohms in parallel with 20 ohms. And that comes out to 6.667, I don't know how many significant digits, I don't need that many significant digits. So that is our R Thevenin, so we've just completed step number three. Now step number four is going to be to find the voltage right here. So to find the voltage across here, uh, the way I would do it would basically be to find the current going through those and then find the voltage across this 10 ohm resistor and then subtract that from 100 ohms. So basically we can just do our Ohm's law right there we, where we have 100 volts minus 80 volts over an equivalent resistance of 30. So that gives us 20 over 30. So our current is basically two thirds amps or, you know, 0.6. Uh, how do we go with that? 0.667 amps. All right, and since we now know the current through that 10 ohm resistor, we can find the voltage drop by just basically saying 0.667. Um, that's actually not repeating. Why did I put that on those? Holy cow. 0.667, because I'm rounding, not repeating. Amps times 10 ohms equals 6.67 volts. So now we know that it's this point right here is going to be 93.33 volts, which is going to be our Thevenin voltage. Excellent. So now we know our Thevenin voltage and our Thevenin resistance. So step five is basically we take those things and we throw the load back in and we have 93.33, and we have 6.667 ohms, and then we have our R load, which in this case is just 50 ohms. All right, sanity check. 93.33, that makes sense because it's less than 100, more than 80, and so we were anticipating something in that range. The 6.667 ohms, um, that also makes sense because any time you take two resistors and put them in parallel, they're going to be, the equivalent resistance is gonna be lower than the lowest of those resistances. So that seems reasonable. Now finally, last check, since I did this earlier, let's see if my math looks right here too. 93.3, oh, I didn't do as, as many significant digits when I did this in here, but everything's matching. Now, I also did it in LT Spice, so let me pull that up and we can show what it looks like in LT Spice and make sure, because I did it, I created this circuit and I created this circuit and I made sure that according to the load, 
it is seeing the exact same voltage and the exact same current through it. So on the left, I have the full circuit and we have R3 as a load. And then on the right, I have a smaller version, the seven and equivalent circuit with R5 as the load. So I'm gonna make this quite quick and painless and just run the simulation. And so let's check our current through on this one. It's saying going vertically, so from bottom to top, that it is negative 1.647 amps. And then on this one, we are seeing the blue is negative 1.64646 amps. So rounding errors aside, there is at least the same exact current through them. Now let's check the voltage across them in reference to ground. So this one, our voltage is looking like it's 82.35 volts. And then this one is saying 82.23 volts. So again, other than rounding issues, that all makes sense. And again, that makes sense with the 93.33 volts here. I, man, do as I say and not as I do. My units are terrible here. But we do expect there to be a voltage drop over this resistance. Um, and so we do expect that to be yeah, in the lower 80s, that, that makes sense. All of this makes sense, everything's matching. It shows that this circuit and this circuit from the viewpoint of the load are the exact same. Everything is the exact same. So we can switch this 50 to 100 and then instead of having to solve all of this again, we can just solve for this and it's way, way easier. Okay, so Thevenin equivalent is not that difficult. You just have to remember how to do the different steps and if you don't do it that frequently, it is easy to forget them. That's okay, that's why there are resources on the internet like we have on circuitbread.com to come back and remember like, oh, those are the steps, don't worry about it. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, again, you can always make things more complicated with more complicated math, but don't forget the fundamentals. Don't forget exactly what you're trying to attempt here, and you should be fine. Okay, I hope that this was enlightening, that you now fully understand Thevenin equivalent circuits. If you do, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, all of that good stuff, and we will catch you in our next Circuits 1 tutorial. Have a good one.